Hey everybody, it's SQ. How y'all doing today? Today I'm going to be explaining how to properly go about winning on Territorial IO. My demonstration took place on the Europe map, but the method goes for all maps. Some maps are a little bit more land-based and some are more water-based. The point is, is that the method works for everyone, every map. Let's get right into it. So to start, you're going to want to do what's called an opening. But first we need to understand what this means. An opening is the initial expansion you get in the first 30 seconds or so of the game. Your goal should be to get as much land as possible without risking the integrity of your empire. With all of this knowledge, you will need to know how to properly open up a match. I could explain all of this, but instead I will leave a link in the description of a video that shows you how to do a proper opening. The next portion of the game is what I call the bot expansion. This expansion takes anywhere from 30 seconds to 2 minutes, depending on the amount of space you have to expand. To get the expansion done in the most efficient way possible, you'll want to send out anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 troops, depending on how much room you have to expand. As you can see, I only like to use 1,000 since the bots around me are tiny in size. The bots like to full send, meaning the bots send all of their troops in one direction preventing them from defending the rest of their land. To take advantage of this, you'll want to send a minimal amount of troops into the bots that send all of their troops away. The moment a bot sends their troops, you should be attacking that same bot. As you are finishing up the bot expansion, you'll want to eye up your neighbors to determine which of them is the weakest. If you are the weakest neighbor, you'll want to sit back and save up troops. On the other hand, if you did a good job on your bot expansion and spawn location, you should have more than enough troops to invade at least one neighbor. After you take a good look at all of your neighbors, you'll want to determine whether or not any of them can easily be taken out. To determine whether or not they're easy targets, you can look at their troop count, and if your troop count is more than double your opponent's troop count, you should invade the target with one-fourth to one-fifth of your troops. You'll also want to try to get the nation's neighbors to help you take out the targeted nation. I warn you that if you try to take out one of these weak links on your own, it may or may not work out. The next step in winning is to see which of your neighbors will be longtime allies. The way you determine if your neighbor will be one of these is by checking to see if the nation's only expansion other than yourself is in a different direction. When I say this, I want you to look at the blue player Soviet. Soviet can either expand into me or in a direction that I will not be able to expand into. That's how I determined that Soviet is a longtime ally, because he can only expand down south or into me. The next thing on your agenda is to take out your weakest neighbor on your strongest border. This essentially means that you want to take out people who share a large border with you, but are weak to the extreme. Even if they aren't incredibly weak, you'll want to initiate the attack by commanding other people to attack or by attacking by yourself. If you are on the full send game mode, or the crown game mode, you'll probably want to get the others to attack first, otherwise you should be the first to attack. The bulk of the game from this point forward is just a rinse and repeat sort of deal. You must always have a keen eye out for mistakes made by others. These could range anywhere from full sends to being commanded to attack, all the way to something as simple as an emoji used by others. You must also be sure that you are being as diplomatic as possible. You're, you'll start to see me send truces and hearts to others to let them know that I am on their side, when in reality, I'm in it for myself. All the way up to this point, you could have gotten away with the fact that you weren't as friendly with others as you should have been. Unfortunately, these people will remember and will trust the others more than you due to your lack of care. From this point forward, you'll want to convince others not to attack you, but to attack each other instead. Having the crown doesn't help your situation because it makes you a huge target to everyone else. Sometimes it is easier to make an ally in the end so you don't get ganged up on. This could lead to voting for peace in the end. If you play all of your cards right, winning should be easy all the way up to this point. A lot of these things can't be learned from a single tutorial. Only the basics can be taught. Things like diplomacy or friendliness is determined by you. You as a player will form your own way of playing the game that may or may not be more efficient than mine. As long as you have the basics down, you can achieve greatness. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please let me know in the comment section and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. See y'all in the next one.